Hey guys, I am Perry Nemiroff, and I have your very first interview for our Ash vs. Evil Dead after show, After Ash right now. We are so lucky we have Miss Lucy Lawless in the studio with us. Thank Thanks, you so much Perry. for coming. We are so excited to be the official home of the Ash vs. Evil Dead after show, so be sure to check that out every single week right here after the show airs. So now let's talk Ruby, because Ruby has gone through an incredible transformation throughout season one and now season two also. Yeah, yeah she's being humanized by her proximity to these <laughs> subhumans. Yeah, you know, that's they're, for they're sure. They're teaching her the way. How much did you know when you first got the role? Because in the beginning of season oh, one... nothing. Look, they hadn't even written it, okay? They hadn't even written They were like, okay, we know we want Ruby, but we have to set up the world. And, and I say, like, okay, well, is she good or is she bad? And they're like, ah, she's good, she's good. Okay, so I'm being good. And they're like, no, she's bad, she's bad. <laughs> Episode nine, they go, finally... You know, okay, what's is she Ruby Noby or not? And they're like, no, she's not. But until then, until like episode nine, it wasn't locked in. It's a dead episode season. So um, anyway, we, we've we've nailed it down kind of now. So when did you find out she was going to be one of the? It's a big deal that she's a dark one. She's the one who wrote the Necronomicon. Honey, and she did was you find always going to be that, but it was just truly you've got to sit setting up the world and figuring out what the series is and how to honor the the. Uh, you know the whole enterprise whole <laughs> not just the, tonally those three movies the classics are so different so how do we make a series that honors all of it um it was really quite a juggling act so um to figure out how to bring she's we call it a spanner in the works like a wrench in the what do you say in america throwing a wrench in the <laughs> clearly i'm not whatever. very good at american yeah. sayings yeah yeah <laughs> Um, anyway, she's the one who kind of ruins everybody's good time. So when you're promoting, because I was talking to you before we started about New York Comic Con last year, and at that yeah. point, most people had only seen episode one. So when you're going out and promoting and you're like, oh, Ruby Noby, do you think she's going to be Ruby Noby? Yeah, I did. Well, I mean, Bruce and I were always laughing because people would say, who is Ruby? And he'd go, who is Ruby? Because was that, the joke is that behind the Bruce scenes is like, nobody knows. It has, nobody's decided <laughs> yet. So I was having to go out and just BS my way through, um, you know, all those promotions and, and behind the scenes. I was like, you guys, you hung me out to dry. But, you know, this is what happens sometimes in TV. Is it weird for you as an actress? Like, do you go into it prepping to be Ruby Noby and then all of a sudden have to completely switch gears when that is kind of out of the picture? Yeah, you you try, you do what's in the script, and when they go, oh no, we changed our minds, you then you do what's in the next script. So it's incredibly uneven sometimes, but uh, that's happened on every show I've ever done, to be honest with you. Is there any switch uh, beyond Ash versus Evil Dead that you've had to do like that that really threw you for whatever reason? Well, I mean, it even happened in Xena. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't remember what the hell it was about now. Uh, Battlestar was perhaps the only one I ever did where she absolutely was known. I knew she was a Cylon before I even took the job, and that was like two or three years before it was revealed. So that would be the one show I've ever done where this it played out as planned. And now here you've got kind of another twist in a way at the start of season two, because when season one wraps up, I was wondering, you know, where is Ruby going from this point? Is she going to be the main villain? And then first episode, season two, we find out she's team good guy in a way. Now. She's trying to be team good guy. She's doing her best. Can we trust her? I don't know. But we're kind of stuck together. So um, it's funny to be such an outlier that like even her own team kind of fear and hate her. But, um, I mean, families are like that. You get to work with We're everyone We're a funny little family. Too, I know, I nice. love it. When I first got vomited on by a demon, I was like, ugh, oh, I'm finally <laughs> in the club. You guys, I mean, have you perfected the showering process at this point? Because, like, demon vomit, blood, I don't know how you guys clean up after the show. No, I, Dana gets the worst of it. And Ray, oh, Ray suffers. Uh, we love seeing Bruce suffer. That, that's the crux of the entire franchise is seeing Bruce miserable and in, you know in physical in discomfort and Yet he looks um, so happy in every single episode he is he's a very happy little bunny as our bruce <laughs> so can you tell me anything about your character's relationship specifically with dana's character on the show because at this point we we've seen her interact with ash we've seen her yeah. interact with pablo not so much she's about a how she bit of an about orphan it. i mean she's literally an orphan right the character kelly um, played by my darling friend Dana DeLorenzo. She and does one heck of a Bruce impression. All impressions. Oh, she's so actually. good, isn't she? She's really yeah. talented. And um, 
Uh, what happens? Oh, yeah, we go on a bit of a, a, a rampage with um, shitloads of guns, which we, we're like, can we fire it now? Can we fire it? <laughs> They're like, no, 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 you, you, no guns in this one. Well, what are we carrying these things for? Well, anyway, she and I, are, yeah, a bit of a girl power kind of mission. I like the sound of that, especially after I was very upset when Amanda was cut out of the show last year. I really thought she was going to you know, make know. it through. I know, I know, I know. I know. Jill Marie Jones was She's so fantastic. incredible. Um, you know, listen, none of us are safe. Maybe oh. Bruce. Maybe. Stresses me out. I can't handle it. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about what goes down in this first episode specifically. So I want to know what it's like working with your children. Oh, we're oh, with my so children. We're, we're going to talk full spoilers Ugh. for episode it's one of season brats. two. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Like Creepy brats. Demon spawn everywhere. They grow oh, yeah. up and become teenagers and rebel. And we've got a bit of a rebellion on our hands. So I need this knucklehead and his loser mates to um, help me put those little bastards back in the box. What do they look like on set? Do they look like how we see them in the yes, final version of the show? Yes, there's sort of these naked grey guys with, with funky teeth running around. And, all uh, practical? And all skinny. Yeah, they're they're really wiry guys. They're um, like Cirque du Soleil performers, so they're always upside down. They're completely gravity-defying. They're amazing. And... Um, and they're darlings, and I can even tell them apart, even in their costumes, so that <laughs> kind of makes me happy. I imagine there there has to be some digital element of it, though, right? Especially yeah, because oh, I'm thinking yes. of the oh, this one... This show is, it is very... I'm picturing yeah, right now the part with Ray where one of the children's head is, is kind of contorted backwards-ish. Like, he's crawling almost like a little spider, and his head is flipped around. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember <laughs> that, but there's just so much craziness on set all the time that... It's like, oh, it's a spider with his head flipped around back. Big deal. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a child going downstairs on his back like Linda Blair. Oh, God. How is it working with the older version of the children versus I were they children? Children when they were yes, playing we them? We did have one? children. We did have these tiny little children being birthed. Oh, you'll get to see it all. It's so adorable. <laughs> That's you not see, the way I would describe they it. It's okay. Are adorable. Oh. But at least Ray doesn't have to like. Puke them out this yeah, time. We, we've, got, we've got an uh, stress me out a little new baby birthing hole. What? I won't say from where? That's the most disturbing tease I've ever heard, but yeah, I kind of love it. Yeah. So, what is it like getting puked on by one of those characters? Is it just? I enjoy it. Oh well, then. Does it happen more throughout the season? Do you get do you no, get sadly, to live your dream multiple sadly, times? Sadly, no. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, it, it, you're standing there covered in demon vomit and you're just laughing at the monitor because it's so over the top because they will just shoot this fire hose of, of like black chowder down your, up, up your sinuses. You've oh. got chunks in your nose. Remember those days, guys? Remember those days when you're a teenager and you carry this chunk of potato around in your sinus for I about three days? I don't think I ever had that day. It's like that. I was missing out. Clearly I didn't like, yeah. live life to the fullest. Yeah. And what about continuity? Because I see something like that, and I'm like, oh, can you? Yeah, that's what I figured. Can you only do something like that once? If you do it right, you only have to do it once. That's my mission. I learned that on Xena. Just do it right as soon as possible. Don't dick around because it will. You will be in hell for much longer. So you just go in and, and just take it like a take it like a woman, and uh, it, the pain will be over much quicker. Yeah. So what about now, blood and dirt continuity? Do you constantly have someone in your face comparing images from a couple scenes ago to make sure everything is perfect? Uh, you're constantly changing shirts mm. to, you know, going back to that scene. But uh, as Bruce taught me, you like you're magically clean after a minute screen time because they can't carry blood can in you if you're already covered in blood. It ain't funny. You, it's only funny if you do someone who's clean right so just magically it all melts away and then boom as long as you're having again. fun you don't notice and that is definitely the case with the no, show as long as you're having fun Ex we don't notice i am always having fun that's all that matters so now we are talking about season two episode one is there anything you can tease about episodes to come that you're really excited for people to say um yes Ash's dad is a bit of a Lothario and he's mm. got a little thing for Ruby and he's got a horrible fetishy little name for my character. Oh boy. 
you have the best teases and you have the best relationships going between that and uh everything with uh dana i'm really pumped oh, yeah, for yeah, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. coming ruby's yeah. way this season yeah it's good all right so we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna play a game now we are gonna play our movie tv version of the game would you rather so it's basically just picking between the two things maybe briefly explaining why you would choose one or the mm -hmm. other all right so this is like catholic girl school by the way <laughs> we used to play this we used to play this, how low can you go? And you would just have to undercut them with a comment a little more distasteful Ooh. than the other one. And I never lost a game, just saying. Oh, boy. I'm going to save, maybe I'll save that game for Bruce in the future. I feel like it. he'd be really good at that. Have you ever played with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Bruce is a little bit more of a gentleman than um, you all give him credit for. Oh, boy. He, yeah, I'd probably I'd clean the floor with Bruce. A gentleman and a very skilled entertainer at oh, all Comic-Cons I've amazing. seen him at, that's so for sure. Amazing. He's hilarious. All right, so... Would you rather work opposite someone who prepares too much or not enough? Ooh, that's a good question. I guess too much because at least then I could respect their diligence. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't prepare enough, they're just going to ruin our, would our you, scene. And would I'm, you? I'm here's like a smash. good connection to that, though. Would you rather work with someone who is method or someone who improvises all the time? Improvises. Hmm. Method's painful. <laughs> I'd I've, love to do it myself, but in television, you don't have the luxury of being that indulgent. Have you worked with someone who's method often? Mm, oh a little bit, but not, um, yeah. Yeah, but long ago. Would you rather screw up every take yourself or have someone else screw up your best someone take? Someone else. Someone else. Because they can screw up my take, but we can fix it in post. <laughs> I feel like that's the thing in this industry you're never supposed to say. Well, we'll fix it in post. Oh, we fix everything in post. Are you kidding? Yeah. Is there anything, an example you can drop in Ash vs. Evil Dead where you fixed it in post and like nobody's ever picked up on it? Oh, sometimes in looping you can do that. Oh, Actors yeah. hate going to looping because it always happens in the weekend or after work at 11 o'clock at night and you have to replace dialogue that didn't come. But you can change things. You can join up ideas. You can make things much better if you're, if you're sensitive to the, the potential of it. Um, I can't actually remember a specific example, but that's my, my, my favorite. All right, I got a tough one for you now. Would you rather work on a set with no food or no caffeine? No food. You picked my answer. Would you rather have to fake sneeze or fake vomit in a scene? Fake vomit. I think I'd be successful at that, but fake sneeze is hard. It's hard to nail that one. When I first came up with the question, I didn't think fake sneezing was that hard, and then I thought it's about really it for a hard. quick second. Yeah. yeah, to do it convincingly. Yeah. Would you rather lose a top secret script or break a really expensive piece of equipment? Oh, script. Are you kidding? I've it's actually like, heard oops, the opposite Humans often. do that. I know, if you do that with Marvel, like, you will never eat, eat in this town again, you know, they exactly. will ruin you. But it's like, oops. <laughs> At least my Tesla's in good shape. <laughs> Would you rather work opposite a CG creature or a real animal? A real animal. Really? Uh-huh. Okay. Have uh -huh. you worked with very many real animals? Uh, some, yeah. Okay. I figured, like, crickets. Oh, I don't know. Like I, was gonna, locusts I was going to go puppies and, uh, and kittens. That's goat. cool. No, we don't get puppies and kittens oh. much. No. That's Sometimes when you have to work with babies and they're just being born, you have to like cover them in cream cheese and jam. And that's a <laughs> kind of a, that's a stinkier event than like having a goat on set. Wait, what? When do you cover a baby in cream oh, cheese and jam? Oh, to make them look like they're newborn. Oh, God. See, there's, there's smaller babies <laughs> you can possibly find. Cover them in jam. Throw a bit of... I didn't Cream know that was the them. secret to that. That's the secret, but oh. under the hot lights. Ooh, oh, after a while. Oh, my God. I, this is the worst transition ever. Would you rather have a kissing scene with someone with bad breath or food in their teeth? No. Oh. Um, I'm going to go with food because it might be something I like. <laughs> that is it for Would You Rather with Boom, Lucy we went Lyle. out on a high. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this interview. Lucy, thank you so much for coming in. We're really excited about Ash vs. Evil Dead here and really excited that we are doing the Ash vs. Evil Dead after show, which we are calling After Ash. 
Be sure to check it out every single Sunday right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. It takes place after Ash vs. Evil Dead airs, so it'll be at about 8.30 p.m. EST. Thank you again for coming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.